If you've got leftover chicken, or just need a satisfying bowl of broth and noodles, look no further than chicken and dumplings. Somewhere between a soup and a stew, this rich broth and chewy noodles will satisfy even the deepest of comfort food cravings. We begin with shredded chicken and the leftover bones. I highly recommend you make our cast iron roast chicken from last week's video and then use the leftovers to make this, but if you need to grab a store-bought rotisserie and shred that, that'll work as well. Either way, we're gonna use these roasted bones to fortify a store-bought chicken stock. So for that, we will take those bones and fold them up in some cheesecloth, grab a little bit of butcher's twine and tie up both ends. Next up, we're gonna get a large Dutch oven and add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I've got a half cup of carrots, half cup of diced yellow onion, a couple cloves of minced garlic, and a half a cup of diced celery. That's known as a mirepoix. It's a great flavor base for soups and stews. Go ahead and get that in over medium heat and stir for five to seven minutes until it is softened and slightly translucent. Of course, seasoning with fresh cracked pepper and a pinch of salt. I'm also adding in a teaspoon of dry oregano because I love the flavor in soups. And additional herbage will come in the form of sage, rosemary, and thyme. Very classic poultry herbs. I'm going to take a few sprigs of each and tie them up in a traditional bouquet garni or a uh, pack of herbs. Tie that together with a string of butcher's twine. Leave yourself a nice long end there so you can fish it out easily. Next up, we'll go in with eight cups of a good quality, low sodium store-bought chicken broth. If you have homemade, even better. We're gonna make ours semi-homemade by adding in that bouquet garni and adding in those leftover roasted chicken bones. It's gonna give a nice bit of flavor, gelatin, and roasted chicken flavor to our stock. We're gonna simmer that for 45 to 50 minutes. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and turn our attention to our dumplings. One and three quarter cups of flour go into a mixing bowl followed by some fresh cracked pepper and salt for seasoning. About a uh, half teaspoon of baking powder, you can see how exact I'm feeling today. And one third cup of vegetable shortening. You could also use lard or cold unsalted butter for this, but shortening is shelf stable and I had it on hand, so I went ahead and used that. Once we add that, we're gonna add in about three quarter cups of whole milk, but we're gonna do it just a little bit at a time so we don't oversaturate the dough. Oh, and yeah, a little bit of green onions because we need green onions in everything. Go ahead and use a fork or a spatula to bring that dough together. If it's a little sticky towards the end, that is all right. We're gonna add more flour when we roll it out on our board. So once it all comes together, go ahead and set that aside for just a moment, giving yourself some time to grab a little bit of extra all-purpose flour, and spread that out on your board. We'll go ahead and turn that dough out, sprinkle a little more flour on top, and just use your hands to bring this dough together. Obviously there's no yeast in here, it's not gonna rise, so as soon as it comes together and it is no longer tacky to the touch, you can go ahead and proceed to rolling it out into a large disc. Go ahead and use a rolling pan, empty wine bottle, uh, whatever you've got on hand. We want to roll this out to roughly one quarter to one third of an inch in thickness. Once you've got it rolled out, you've got choices. You could use a very sharp knife, but I prefer a pizza cutter. And no matter what you do, you're going to want to dust the top with a little extra flour to keep these dumplings from sticking to one another when we drop them in the broth. Cut this however you like. I prefer about one inch squares or diamonds as the pattern I'm going for here. I got a few good ones. Once you've got your dumplings all cut up, you're gonna of course need to remove those herbs from our chicken stock. They've given up all they have to offer. And of course, the remains of your chicken. Make sure you drain that thoroughly, even uh, squeeze out that uh, cheesecloth. Don't wanna lose any of that liquid gold. And now to our simmering stock, we will add our dumplings one at a time. I wouldn't worry too much about them sticking together, but I would recommend you evenly distribute them throughout the broth. Go ahead and stir them once they've been in there for a minute or so, so they 
can uh, all evenly distribute themselves throughout the broth. We'll put the lid on, give these 15 or 20 minutes to cook through, and then at the very end, add in your remaining rotisserie or baked chicken. I like a nice mixture of white and dark meat. Let's taste for seasoning. This needs a little more salt and pepper. Once I had that added, I went ahead and bowled it up. No fancy garnishes here, just, um, well, a little extra green onion. Right on top of that piping hot broth. This is um, essentially a chicken noodle soup recipe with the pasta replaced by these chewy, pillowy dumplings perfumed with the essence of my beloved green onion. Um, in other words, it's, it's comfort food perfection. If you're sick, this will heal you. If you're hungry, this will nourish you. And by all means, if you're well-dressed and trying to eat this, it is, um, well, it's, it's very likely to stain you. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna finish this one off camera, but uh, you go on and uh, make this or, or whatever else your heart desires, so long as you go and make something delicious.